My friends in Christ, one of the most difficult things to encounter in our life is the reality of suffering. Remember in 1974, I was a freshman at Villanova University in Philadelphia, taught by the Augustinian priests. One of the first classes that I took was on comparative religions. Very interesting course in which we studied Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Shintoism, Taoism, Zoroastrianism, Judaism, Islamism, all these different religions. But what was very interesting is that only the Catholic faith gives a positive interpretation to suffering. Only the Catholic faith gives a positive interpretation to human suffering. The angels in the diary of St. Faustina, an angel appeared to St. Faustina and said that the angel had a holy envy for us for two things that we can do that they cannot do which would be to receive Holy Communion and to suffer. Now, suffering in and of itself is neutral, neither good nor bad. But it all depends on what do we do with our suffering. That's the big challenge. And suffering can either make you better or bitter. I repeat, suffering can either make you better or bitter. It all depends on what you do with your suffering. Makes us a better person or a bitter person. Who gives meaning to our life and to our suffering? It is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus could have decided to come into the world and save us in a different way. But Jesus willingly chose the pathway of the cross and his passion and death which leads to the glory of the resurrection. So let's talk about this reality of, of redemptive suffering. Because whether you like it or not, you have to suffer. And how much wasted suffering, how many hospitals, people suffer but they suffer leading to despair. How many elderly people in nursing homes suffering with, with no meaning whatsoever? How many cancer victims suffer with no purpose whatsoever? So let's first of all identify what are the different types of suffering what Jesus did, we'll talk about a couple of saints, how they understood the salvific meaning of suffering. You can suffer physically, physical ailments. You can suffer socially, not understanding the culture. You can, un you can suffer within the context of the family, family members that don't really seem to understand you. You can suffer economically, can't even pay the bills. You can suffer 
emotionally. You're assaulted by doubts, fears, insecurities. However, my essential message is this. Suffering can make us better or bitter. We have to learn how can we unite our sufferings with Christ and fill up what, fill up what is lacking in the passion of Christ. So when we suffer, we should unite our suffering with Jesus Christ on the cross. But even more so, we should unite our sufferings with the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Next time you go to Mass, next time you go to Holy Communion, place your sufferings on the altar. Place your sufferings in the chalice. Place your sufferings on the paten so that when the priest who acts in the person of Christ, when the priest lifts up the host, says, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. He lifts up the chalice, which is turned into the blood of Christ. Do this in memory of me. And what's happening is, as the priest is lifting up the spotless victim, Jesus Christ, to God the Father, he's lifting up your own sufferings. And your suffering has infinite value. Are you becoming better or bitter? Obviously, if you do that, you're becoming a better or more holy person. I'd like to highlight two modern saints who understood the salvific value of suffering. First, his name is Saint Padre Pio. Saint Padre Pio, a Franciscan priest that died when I was 12 years old. He's a modern saint. He died in 1968. Padre Pio had a mystical experience that changed his life and had many people in the world, millions of people in the world, looking at him. In 1918, while in prayer, in front of a crucifix, Padre, Padre Pio experienced within his hands, within his feet, within his side, the piercing nail marks of Jesus Christ in his hands and his feet. And the lance then penetrated the heart of Christ. Padre Pio experienced it. We call that the stigmata. And his father, founder, St. Francis of Assisi, had experienced that about 700 years earlier. It's called the stigmata. One occasion, someone asked Padre Pio, did that hurt? So this is not a Christmas decoration. Of course it hurts. And Padre Pio would actually bleed. His wounds would open and the blood would ooze out of his hands and his feet every Friday and during all of Lent. Now why did Padre Pio willingly accept the wounds of Jesus Christ in his body? For three reasons. First reason, to console the suffering Jesus Christ. We can console Jesus Christ 
by willingly accepting our own wounds, our own sufferings. The second, to repair for sins. So many sins committed in the world and so few generous souls that are willing to offer up their sufferings to the spotless victim, Jesus Christ, in reparation for these sins that wound the heart of Christ. And third, Padre Pio willingly suffered the passion of Christ, the stigmata, for the conversion of sinners. My friends, do you understand the value of an immortal soul? Your soul, the soul of that sinner that is possibly heading toward the precipice, his soul, your soul, is worth more than the whole created universe. Your soul, his soul, was redeemed, as St. Peter says in his letter. Not redeemed by gold or silver or by the blood of calves and animals, but you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Your soul is worth the blood of Jesus Christ. The soul of the sinner is worth more than the whole created universe. And many souls will be saved if we learn how to pray well, we learn how to love God well. We learn how to suffer patiently. Remember your sufferings. Don't, be given, don't give in to discouragement or despair. But unite your sufferings to the spotless victim. And his name is Jesus Christ. So go through the various list of sufferings that are prevalent in our world. Pray over this. Try to be cognizant of the way which God has willingly allowed you to suffer for him. To fill up what is lacking the passion of Christ. Probably most of you are not called to have the stigmata pod repeal. But all of us are called to unite our sufferings with Christ. Is your suffering a physical ailment? Is your suffering some type of disease? For the love of God, do not waste your suffering, but unite your suffering to the cross of Christ. Unite your suffering to the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Unite your suffering that Jesus has shed his blood for you. Do not waste your suffering. Is your suffering due to some family circumstance, then united to Jesus Christ. I'd like to paint for you a contrast. Okay, imagine that John gets up in the morning with a splitting headache, gets out of bed and he complains. At the table with his wife, he barks at his wife in anger. While heading to work, there's a lot of traffic. 
and he's cussing out the other people on the highway. And he's still got this splitting headache. When he arrives at work, he's angry and bitter and caustic and complaining toward all the people in his office. And his headache is still there. On the way back from work, once again traffic, and he's cussing out those who are on the freeway. He arrived at home, and he's in a bad mood. His headache is making him a bitter person, not a better person. And try to imagine that Mary, she gets up with a headache. And what does she do with the headache? She says, well, Jesus Christ had a crown of thorns. He suffered much more than I did. I will offer my headache to Jesus and Mary, who suffered so much for me and for the salvation of the world. While at breakfast, even though she, was, she has a splitting headache, she smiles at her husband. She greets her children. She gives him a hug, then sends him off to school, says goodbye to her husband. During the course of the day, her headache does not subside, but her headache stays with her. But during the whole course of the day, she's reflecting upon Jesus Christ and his crown of thorns. And she's thinking, even though this headache is painful, even though this headache is all absorbing, how good God is that he's allowed me to collaborate with him in his passion, in his redemptive suffering. And she's offering her headache for her husband in his struggles at work. She's offering her headache for her children who are teenagers and have so many struggles that they have to go through in the modern world. She's offering her headache for the suffering and abandoned souls in purgatory, especially the souls that are abandoned and no one prays for them. She's offering this headache. She's offering the headache for the church, for future vocations, for the priesthood. She's offering a headache for the bishops. She's offering a headache for the Holy Father, Pope Francis. And later on that evening, at five o'clock, she heads off to her church. The name of the church is Holy Cross. She arrives five minutes early for Holy Mass. And what she does is she looks up at the cross and she sees Jesus hanging on the cross with his crown of thorns. And what she does is she takes her headache and all that she suffered during the course of that day. She places her headache on the altar. And during the consecration of the Mass, when the priest is lifting up the chalice and he's lifting up the host, she's lifting up her headache to Jesus Christ, present in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. In the culminating moment of the Mass, She receives Holy Communion, says, Lord, this headache is very painful, but I thank you that you have allowed me to fill up what is, what is lacking in your passion by suffering this for you and for the salvation of the world. So my friends in Christ, we all have sufferings in our life. Let us pray, my friends, that we will not become 
bitter but better. Let us pray for the grace to unite our sufferings with Christ. And say with St. Francis, We adore you, Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.